Hello, and welcome to LibTech Tools. I'm Rachel Hendrick, the editor and publisher of Choice. I'm here with Gary Price, the editor of InfoDocket and ARL Day and Review. And today we're looking at Chatbot Arena. And this is really exciting because we've been playing with this for a while before we started recording. Um, so Chatbot Arena is a service of uh, Ellipsis, which is uh, an organization started by students at three universities, UC Berkeley, UC San Diego, and Carnegie Mellon. And it, it's used to analyze and compare large language models. So we came up with some questions and we're going to pit them again against each other in battle and arena and show you what that means. But I do want to mention that it's important to remember that there are privacy concerns with all uh, large language models. And Chatbot Arena is actually a laboratory for these students and professors. And Ellipsis uses these interactions in their research. So just be really careful about what, what you're telling uh, the, you know, and, and how you're interacting with all language, large language models, but certainly Chatbot Arena. So Gary, can you show us the... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, so first, let me share my screen. <laughs> do that. We'll do that. So we get the disclaimer. Okay, and here we are. Here we are in the arena. Chatbot Arena has a bunch of different features, and we'll talk about a few of them right now. First of all, is the arena where you can take two different models, and there's a lot of them, without knowing which ones you're using. Ask a question. Create a prompt would be a better way of putting it, a proper way of putting it. Create a prompt and then compare model A with model B. If you like, you can then vote for it and then go to the leaderboard and see what models are doing better than other models. So why don't we give that first uh, option a try? Let's pick a question, which we have been working on. Something as simple as who won the 2023 Super Bowl? We have no idea what we're going to come up with here. Well, that's a really exciting part of, of uh, the, the the battle because you you don't get to choose what uh, which language model you're, you're using. Right. And there's 33 different models it can choose from. So we will paste that in. That's done. We will send it. And we will wait. Maybe forever. This is funny. Well, I think what, what we found in testing these questions is that this really shows the limitation of um of uh of of some AI models because it uh shows when when they were last trained. So right. now most people won't be playing with this many, but I think that also the point, and I agree a hundred percent with what you said, is that for most users and not even provided, they don't even understand that the models, unless they've got a whole nother set of technology, which is often referred to as RAG, we'll save that conversation for another time. Yeah. They're not real time. They have a training end date, meaning the last time they were created, the last time they were updated and they're made available. So in the case of the two versions here, we don't know which two they are. One, says the Chiefs won, they beat the Eagles. The other one says, we got a clue, it's from OpenAI. We don't know. We don't have any of that information that was last updated in October, 2021. Yep. So now we'll, we'll vote. And it's better, I think, yep. And we oh. found out, now this is so interesting to me. Oh, wow. The, the, the winner in our pick, the one that we, Hey, at least they had something. Yeah, was from Claude, which is a company, uh, which is a model from a company called Anthropic. Anthropic, which is funded by a lot of different people, but one of the main funders is a company you might have heard of that rhymes with Google, and it begins with a G, Google. And then this one, which is a more current model of GPT, GPT four, which says it wasn't updated since October of twenty twenty one. Mm -hmm. which seems a bit odd to me that does but seem very regardless odd because, go ahead oh just because i i was under the impression that chat gpt was was the newest version of uh of right AI. i was under the impression too that gpt4 was much more which was more was more current than 
Yeah. Um, October 2021. I think this also illustrates the point with sometimes these models just don't work right. Let's do this again. So let's move on. Let's take that same question, Rachel. Okay. And now we'll move on to the side by side battle where you can actually, users can actually select which models they want to use. As okay. I said a moment ago, there are 33 different models to pick from. You can click here and you can see all the different models. And of course, you could just go to your search engine of choice and learn a lot more about them. So now we, the user, can actually select the model. So let's close this out. And now we will pick a couple of models. Model A, model A, we will pick, now let's pick Mistral, which is a model from France. Mm -hmm. A new one. And we'll pick, mm -hmm. and we'll pick, um, oh, I don't know. We'll pick, we'll pick GPT-4 again. Let's see now, let's see if it gives us a different answer this time. Yeah. And now we will paste in the question. Rate limit case, of this model. So this is a technical issue with um, the service. I haven't seen that. So let's just do this again. And then, and then, of course, we see here that Mistral has no information about it as well. So let's do the same question again. But in this case, let's change to another model. Let's check um, Llama, this version of Llama, which is Llama is um, from Facebook. So again, I find this to be so interesting. And I think, you know, as I said a moment ago, your results may vary given any number of circumstances. The point here is that a very basic and I would say simple reference question cannot be answered by mm -hmm. the two models that we've selected. Yeah. Well, I, I want to, we have a couple more minutes and I really want to get into the Tom Brady fan fiction. So can we ask the question? Right. We... <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> let's take this one. So we, Rachel and I created a scenario. I'll paste it in. Yeah. Tom Brady is returning to the NFL. Very exciting. Um, but to the Miami Dolphins. So let's see, let's see what, what, what we can okay. see what the press release looks like. Let's change this one. Let's go back to an older version of chat GPT okay. or GPT 3.5. So this no, is just 3.5 to be clear is the one that's on open.ai, but that's, that's the free, free right, version. It's it's, 3.5 is what most people use in one form or another when yeah. they just go to the app or you're right, or oh, chat that open AI. The point here is that this is so easy to do, and this is kind of a fun piece of fan fiction, but you can see, I think it's pretty easy to see that how fast it is. Mm -hmm. And it, with the volume, this is also potentially, a, and I think it already is, is a fake news producer. Yeah. yeah. Now it's interesting when we, when Rachel and I tried this a little while ago with a different model, it had the coach of the Miami Dolphins correct. Does it this time? Let's see. But now it has a different coach. Uh, where is it here? Ryan Flores, who's no oh. longer the coach. Yes, yes, yes. That's Again, right. yeah. the, I think the real issue here for reference and researchers and librarians is trust. Yeah. And I don't think I'm going out on the limb by saying that at this point, for me as a librarian, I'm ready to trust whether it's going to be a simple factual question, can or can it give me the answer? I mean, there are obviously other places to go, but you just see that even in creating a fake news release or fan fiction, if you like, mm -hmm. it's so it easy. looks real, Yeah, but even the facts in something like this can be wrong, made up, whatever. And in some cases that that's fine. 
what I think what's also interesting is that you can all you can just go set in you can go to one of these so we've got the finished result right we can say rewrite and we can then go in and replace things add things remove things yeah so rewrite adding that the dolphins for example are considering a move to oh i don't know um Hartford, Portland, Connecticut. Portland, Oregon. Oh, Portland, Oregon. Okay. Or Hartford, Connecticut. Yeah, there you go. And now it adds those facts. And so, yeah. I don't think this is a surprise for most people, mm -hmm. but with the variant, with the mm -hmm. number of miles, and that's really increasing. There you see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's up there. Yeah, or here. Yeah. Well, this this is so cool, yeah. So the point of this overall is, I uh, we we hope you don't start creating fake news and, and distributing yes. it. But oh. the point of this is one the ease of use, and I think this is a really great learning tool to see how different models compare, how the how the word selection, the way they present the results, that type of thing. So if you want to play and learn about different large language models. Um, chatbot arena mm -hmm. is a great place to do it. I completely agree. This has been so much fun, Gary. Thank you so much. My pleasure. See you soon. Okay.